All right, y'all, welcome to another episode of Filling the Gap over there. I see you. Welcome to another episode for those who are tuning in on the regular Spotify podcast and those who are watching on YouTube. Welcome back. Oh, shoot. What did I do with it? I lost it. There it is. Filling the Gap. (laughs) This is our mission statement. Filling the Gap is dedicated to bridging disparities and creating equitable opportunities for all individuals. We believe our mission is to identify and address gaps in various domains. We strive to empower individuals and communities, ensuring that no one is left behind and together we can fill the gap and build a brighter future for all. You think one day I'll probably remember as this? Probably. You said enough. I don't know. It's like the more you say it, <laughs> say it once a week, you start to Sink have it in, in have it in your brain. Have start it in your brain. In. Then you'd be able to flow with it and just paraphrase it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, how's your week been? Well, we started. It's Monday. We started, well, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. So, on Tuesday. Yeah. So, on, yeah. How, so, how, so, how's your week been so far? How's your weekend? It's been weak. So, it's been good. You know, last week we talked about how he's on a fast. We finished the fast. Yes, yes. Came off of it. Good. Took your mama to get some organic coffee. She was loving it. Organic coffee? Yeah. What's organic coffee? Like, what's organic about it? It's all natural. <laughs> what is what is coffee normally organic it means that you know the cream is organic oh okay um you know it's a particular type of coffee bean not made with um, any pesticides or you know chemically induced you know so i don't know man yeah organic, i'm about to say I'm about it's it's, i thought ground coffee beans was <laughs> no it's the way that they grow the, the coffee beans um, so certain pesticides or certain ways that they grow just like some vegetables, you know, or juices. Oh, the bananas. Yeah. You, you seen on the bananas where it either has a four or a nine. Yeah. I think numbers. the nine is like organic, yeah. but four is like processed, right. which is crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. you got to choose two different bananas. Yeah. <laughs> That's besides yeah. the point. And they don't even last that long anymore. You know, no. we got fruit in like two days. That's how I feel about watermelon. Yeah. The watermelon that be in the little containers, oh, I eat yeah. it for a good yeah. two days. Then the rest is like soggy. Yeah. And I'm like. It's crazy. Right. Pineapples too. Get the pineapples and turn hard and turn colors. It's already yellow, but it turned almost like a yellow white. It's like, what <laughs> is going on? I don't know what type of pineapple y'all eat. I don't know. I've seen a lot of videos too where they be spray painting and coloring apples green to be red and other stuff going on. So we just pray over every, we right, just have right, to pray right. over just everything pray. that we eat to make sure that uh, what we're eating is um, in the will of the Lord. Right. And just go from there. Yeah. So that was our introduction, you know, <laughs> our commercial break. But <laughs> getting back to um, what we want to talk about today. But first, my weekend was good, too. Thanks for asking. Hey, I'm yeah. glad I did. Yeah, you, glad did. I you did. did. So glad. my weekend was very well. We had a good time, especially our weekend ministry was phenomenal. Um, we licensed another young minister. So it was it was it was great. Good weekend. Yeah. Um, so today, you know, your podcast came out yesterday. Well, Last week, um, in regards to what it feels and what you have to do to be, how does it feel or the pressures of life that you have to encounter certain things as a young man, especially being saved and living in this world? So I think a segue to that would be... um, The YouTube you're talking about. Yeah, your YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure if you're not following him on YouTube, you definitely do that. How can they follow you? Just Malik Brookins on YouTube. That's it. By by the time you're seeing this video, he's referring to... I dropped the video called How to Be a Christian... And in the world at the same time. That's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. So with that, I was thinking a segue to that would be us just dealing with um, how do we handle pressure? Hmm. You know, how do we handle pressure? And I think that is so vital because when you look at mental health nowadays, so many people are dealing with anxiety, mm-hmm. depression, and a lot of that falls or stems from not being able to balance the area of pressure, whether it's mental pressure uh, peer pressure, which I think is very huge. So I think that's a good place to start. How do, you know, food for thought for those watching, how do you deal with pressure? How do you deal with peer pressure? How do you deal with pressure from your family? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do you deal with pressure from if you play sports, you know, athletic, you know, sports, and you living up to a status quo, you know, because it is a lot of pressure. Yeah. In ministry, it's a lot you of pressure. know, we're in ministry. It's a lot of pressure when you're covering so many you know people and you're 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 having a life and you're having business so i think that's a good place to 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 hit on today you know especially as african-american men or just young people in general um how you're raised also contributes to how you handle pressure right you know um and i was just looking at it and one of the definitions for pressure it says 
influence from members of one's peer group. Um, and it's behavior that can affect many aspects of life that will affect a person's ability to handle pressure that can cause them to fall into other areas such as drinking, drugs, and so forth and so forth. So I think that's definitely a good good place to, to start on. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about peer pressures, it's all about who's your circle, who's around you. Um, pressure can come from anybody, from parents, about these are the grades that you need to get from coaches, like you were saying. I think when it comes to pressure in general, the most practical thing that we can do is breathe, right? Mm-hmm. Take a moment to just be like, woosa, you know, because there's a lot going on. And I feel like when it comes to pressure, you can't allow other people's, I guess, view on how you should do something, you know, be that weight on you because of like, I guess it just depends because even if your parents are like, hey, I need you to get good grades, you feel the pressure of getting good grades. But like, you're trying your best, right, at the end of the day. So I guess it kind of kind of depends. Pressure is very different, right, because you have the good pressure that will kind of push you to be greater so you can grow and, like, the pressure that you need. But there's also the, the bad pressure that kind of wants you to conform, you know, if you're living um, differently than how you know you're supposed to. So I guess – talking about the different ones I feel like if it's a good pressure whether it's a a sport or coach wanting you and trying to push you I think for that one you lean into it right because it's coming against something that one you probably don't understand or you don't want to do because you're not seeing how you can grow so lean into that pressure to allow you to unlock something in you so you can go further when it comes to like the bad pressure yeah, yeah. When it comes to the bad pressure, it's just like you got to be so rooted and grounded in like what you know is the right thing. Uh-huh. Especially because people will try to sway you, and they talk, be talking a good talk to tell you to try to do something. But it's like when you know what you're supposed to be doing and grounded in, you know, like your responsibilities of like a student athlete. Like you're not supposed to be out there drinking or doing certain things. Um, whatever your role is, um, even just being a Christian or being, you know, wherever it may be, you know, the rules that you're not supposed to be doing. Like that kind of reminds me when you, when I was playing basketball in high school that they gave us like a, um, it's like a, what's it, what is it called? Like the conduct. It's like a the code of conduct. Code of conduct. It's yeah. like, if you break these things then you, you just got to sit out a game or you right, sit out right. a couple of things, but it's just like with that, that's life. Um, even if we play a sport or not, just, You know, I don't even know why I'm talking about sports, but in in general, um, in life, when you do something that you know you're not supposed to, you see the repercussions Mm -hmm. of what happens in the long run, which messes you up. So do you think that it's harder to do you believe the pressure is is more challenging for those who are saved than those that are not saved? Since we're talking about Christianity, we talked about, you know, your beliefs and your morals. So as a Christian, do you believe that there's more pressure to be a Christian than it is just to be in the world? I don't think there's more of a pressure. Like for those who say they're a Christian, I don't think there's more of a pressure. I think there's more of a light that shined on it for sure, because you say you represent this. Mm-hmm. So it's like that is how you should live. Um, and it's just like. There's just people watching. There's always somebody watching, waiting for you to mess up, waiting for you to do something bad so they can call you out and say, ah, look at this guy. He's not a Christian, right? Because this is like what you profess. So I don't think there's a pressure behind it because I'm like, for you to live your life, you know what you're supposed to be doing and there's no pressure behind it, you know, to be like Christ, to show love, to do these certain things, which is not a pressure and a hard thing to do, but there is like this light and this weight, I guess, behind it. But I think I think the weight and the pressure are two different things. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think part of it, too, goes to, um, like you said, knowing who you are and not compromising. Right. So when you talk about pressure, why is it pressure on you? Why do you feel a certain way? And is that pressure influencing you because of the definition to compromise? Right. Or is it challenging you? 
to stand firm on your beliefs and to continue to move forward in the things you know are right. Right. So I think that that's part of the challenge because if, like you said, your influence, who's your sphere of influence, who's in your environment, mm-hmm. who's your mentor, who's your coach, who's your parent, who's there to uh, be that leaning post when you need clarity or guidance or wisdom so that you don't make the wrong decision, right. so that you don't feel like you have to do things that you know you really don't want to do. And I think that's part of the challenge, especially from this generation that I've noticed and seen. Um, for me growing up, there was that pressure. Of course, there was pressure. But again, we didn't have social media like you mm-hmm. guys have. We didn't have certain things to influence us the way that you have. Nor did we have um, a lot of leniency when it came to how we were raised in the church. Right. Be it right, wrong, or indifferent. There was a certain reverence of God or fear or certain things that we just knew our parents did not tolerate. Right. So when you talk about pressure, the only pressure we I felt myself, you know, growing up was that I better get good grades. I better do right. Mm -hmm. I better, you know, make up my bed, you know, certain things that you were just taught to do and everything else that we saw in the world didn't really hit to like the eighties or nineties. We started talking about hip hop, started talking about rap and all that. But even then we didn't have the flip phones. We didn't have, you know, all the other social media outlets that this generation has, which makes it more challenging because now you're looking at how other people are living. Right. Flashing money, big houses, driving cars, videos, trying to tell you this is life to live. Then you got the hair, the weave, the eyelashes and everything else. So a lot of what this generation sees as being real or reality is really false. Fake. Yeah. It's fake. And if they're not being raised to know who they are, right. then they're going to always feel some type of pressure to try to appease everyone around them. But yet inside, they're still unhappy. Right inside they're still struggling and putting themselves in compromised positions that could be detrimental to them if they don't have that solid foundation Mm -hmm. i like how you said uh who are the people that are around you i feel like whenever i do my devos it's just perfect for right now we're talking about mark two which is you know the man who's on the mat his friends brought him to jesus but they didn't just bring him jesus they carried him up to the roof right. like that's what's crazy to me like they just didn't try to bring him to jesus and it was just a whole bunch of people there but they brought that man to the roof right and then you gotta think they bust a hole in somebody's roof to lower him down like that's that's crazy to me like who gonna pay for that exactly you gotta think <laughs> back in the day up? right it probably took them a couple weeks to try to build a roof yeah. you know to yeah. fix a roof so i'm like the determination that they had to get their friend saved right mm-hmm. is is so amazing right so i'm like dang who who is around me that when i can't do it for myself they they help me yeah and i love it because i think we've talked about this before too because you know that he gets lowered to jesus and then jesus is like you know your sins are forgiven and then i was talking about um like this is crazy because i'm like you know he didn't say be healed right he said your sins are forgiven and then he said pick up your mat and walk so i'm like dang like why why was he paralyzed how, like, and I kind of looked at it in a point of view of like, you know, the people around us are so important that when we're stuck in a place, um, we have people who can connect with us to help us get free from a certain mindset. Mm-hmm. Like when I was reading it, I, I started thinking about the mindset because he said your sins are forgiven and how we sometimes live in this condemnation state of like paralyzation, which doesn't allow us to move how we want to move in God because we're like. These are the sins that I have that is keeping me stuck. But the one thing he said to him was, your sins are forgiven. Like he didn't say, let your right pinky toe be healed and you're going to get up and walk. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Like he yeah. said, your sins are forgiven. I was like, that's crazy. Like that's so wild that yeah. you say this to a paralyzed man and he's paralyzed. Like he can't walk. So I was like, that's that's wild, you yeah. know? It is, it is. And then then the, the, the crazy part about that is, so in essence – Sometimes, if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, we can put pressure on ourselves internally mm. to cause us to stay in a paralyzed state, and it would take other people around us to help pull us out of a paralyzed place. Because right. if we put pressure on ourselves, you're right. We need somebody else to help us relieve that pressure. Yeah, and that's what those four did when they took on his pressure or his. Mm-hmm pain and they took him to jesus and 
they showed him that we with you because they tore the, the roof open. Right. Yeah. Having to be lowered down. And I love what you said about Jesus that he just said your sins is forgiven. And he spoke it in a sense that when the Pharisees asked him, like, well, who do you think he is? You know, just saying, right, so, you know, right, who, yeah. he, power to forgive sins. But he said, I'm not sure I could do both. Exactly. And he told him, you know, take your bed, get up. You know, he got up. And that's so important when you have people, like you said, that's connected to you that can see your hurt, see you being pressured, see your struggles, see your shortcomings, but still be an encouragement to you until you get your deliverance, mm -hmm. until you get your healing until you bought, you're brought back into that place of restoration. Um, and that's, that's valuable because a lot of times um, from the young people I mentor, pray for, counsel, a lot of them have been missing that component where they didn't even have family members, their own parents or guardians to be that support system for them. Right. And, that's what's needed for this generation. You know, um, we're talking about filling a gap. We're talking about understanding the disparities and bringing commonality so that we can have an understanding of how to move forward. Right. And part of the way we can move forward, my generation to yours, is reflecting and seeing what we can do better. Mm -hmm. How else can we help? When we see, like a lot of times we say when I was in education, they say you see something, don't just say something, but do something. You know, and we have to be about doing something. Doing action. Yeah, yeah. Be about that action. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to continue to be pressured. Otherwise, you're going to have suicide risk go up. Otherwise, you're going to continue to have people shooting up college campuses and, and every place else because of pressure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you call it mental breakdown or instability of the mind or whatever the case may be, but at the end of the day, it's pressure. Pressure. Yep. Pressure causes you to crack. Mm -hmm. Pressure causes mental breakdowns. What else would do it? You know, and I think that's part of the problem um, because so many young people are now being more introvert. And as an introvert, you're keeping things in eternally, which will cause pressure, mm -hmm. internal pressure. You know, you're trying to live up to someone else's standard, but you don't even know who you really are. Right. I think it's important when you say. Not just when you see something, say something, but to do something. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about this. Um. I saw this story about this guy who was on his way to go, you know, end it all. Right. But he was on before he went to like, I think he was on one of these bridges. But before he went to like this bridge, he was on a bus and he started breaking down crying. And he was like, this is like my last moment for someone to say something, do something, you know, to console me. Right. He started breaking down crying. And then he said there was this one guy who just pointed and looked at him and was like, yo, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> and just laughed at him, right? Um, but he was just like, dang, this is it, right? So then he got to the top of this bridge, and it was like this. I forgot what bridge it was, but it was crazy. He jumps off, and then, like, as he's jumping off, he's like, God, this is the wrong thing. Like, I don't want to do this, right? Usually people who, like, do this off this bridge, they're done on impact. Mm -hmm. He survived, and he sees himself drowning, and he's like, God, I need to – to live i need to survive right but he's like fighting but i think he like broke some stuff in his back so he was he wasn't like able to move his legs but he like was trying to go up to the water but he kept falling back down and then when he said that prayer he felt something come and like hold him up and you know he was he was there for a couple hours and then you know the safety patrol got him and they took him back and then the safety patrol was like what you know, what was it? I think he was asking what it was. He didn't know what it was for like the longest time. And then I think, you know, when people started to hear her story, some guy who saw it happen said, what was holding you up was a sea lion. Like this, this random animal, like that just came and swam and was holding him up. Wow. And now he goes and tells his story. And I'm just like, wait a minute. This is this is a real story. This is a real story. Yes. I'm thinking this is a science fiction or some type of No, this is a this is a real story. The guy and everything. Wow. Alive and tells the story and I saw it. I was like, yo, this is this is wild. This is crazy that a sea lion, after he said that prayer, came and like saved him. But the moral of the story is, you know, if he would have had someone do something, right? And not just like see he's going through something. Um, but to like go and take action to see if this random man is okay, it, he would have never had to even get to that point. So I'm just like, let this be an encouragement to us. Like how easy is, is it to just go to someone and say, Hey, how are you doing? Like, are you okay? You're good. Cool. I love you. 
I don't even know you. I don't need to know you, right? But it's yeah. just like I can show love to you, you know? Yeah, that, and I and I, I totally agree with you with that because you know your mom will always tell me she you know she 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 keeps me in check, right? So there'd be times where I'd be like you know I'll be I'm not gonna say an introvert, but I could be antisocial at times. You yeah. Know? And she'd be like, don't do that. Don't go say hi. Go do this. And I'm like, okay, I will. And sometimes I, I fight with them myself to do that. But I know you're right because, again, that goes to that pressure. Why do I get like that? You know, mm -hmm. why do I know I should be as loving? I could, I could be more loving, more compassionate, speak, be more, you know, sociable. But there's still something within me that I'm pressing through that could have been something traumatic that happened as a child or over years, over time. Now, your mom, on the other hand, she... She'll talk, she talk to anybody. She, she'll talk to a rock if it's in front of her. You know, she, <laughs> she you know, the word says the rock will cry out for you. You know, she she makes sure ain't no rock gonna cry out for her. She right, lay, right. She lay hands and it's gonna recover. But that's just <laughs> that's just how we operate. You know, we flow together because two become one. So she's the one that helps me work through whatever internal pressures I have and mm -hmm. vice versa with her. You know, I'm that listening ear. So I believe what you're saying is so true. We all need somebody, yeah. you know, because we're all dealing with some type of thought process, some type of pressure because of what we're thinking, um, what we're trying to live up to, just trying to survive, just right. trying to pay the bills, just trying to, you know, be all that God has called us to be. And sometimes that can be pressure in itself, right? living up to a standard, you mm -hmm. know, living up to, um, you know, being in the world, but not of the world, you know, um, and, and that's a lot, you know, yeah. especially, again, like you said, if you don't have that that support system, you know, that's why it says with two or three come together. So it, even the word it tells us you need somebody right. to be in agreement with you to, if nothing else, to listen to you, number one, or to give you wisdom or advice. Because mm -hmm. the word says that there is safety and wise counsel. So I believe that we got to make sure that we have the right people in our ear gates because everybody has a Christian and kingdom. Right. Right. You know, because now even you have to you got to have that spirit of discernment. Like, right. OK, well, what, what kind are you? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. No, that's what kind so are true. Because everybody who, who say the word says everybody that say they love me. You, you don't say I get away from me. You know, they're going to like, well, I did this for you. And I, I say so as I, I raise it. No, it's I'll right. get away from me. I don't know you Matthew. because it's the heart, the spirit. What's mm -hmm. your motive? Right. You know, behind what you do. Yeah. Why you want to connect with me? What's your motive? Exactly. You, you know. got to ask that a lot because people's motives be all over the place nowadays. You and you got to be careful, too, because if they know you're dealing with pressure or they know you you have an open door and you're vulnerable, that's when the wolves come. Right. They come. So you definitely want to make sure you have the people connected to you to help, number one, relieve that pressure mm -hmm. that you can lean on and depend on. And then number two. Just to bounce ideas off of, just to bounce what you feeling in your spirit to give you confirmation. Right. That okay, I know I'm not crazy. Yep. You know, you know, I know I heard that right. I know what I saw is what I saw. Yep. So that way the pressure of making a wrong decision you won't make because now you have confirmation. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. I think what you said too is important. Having um not just confirmation, but also like accountability too. People yeah. around you just uh support you. I feel like you know, growing up, there was a pressure of like, you know, I had to speak or preach like how you preach. But it's like it's two different things. Right. Right. And like with, you know, you, you kind of like let me find my own groove. And like, you know, especially when you're like he's going to come in his own way. Like he's not coming how I, mm -hmm. you know, speak or preach because he got his own swag. He got his own feel on how he, you know, see the word, his own perspective. Like we all have our own unique anointing and purpose on how we see and read the word of God, right. which people need. Yeah. Because, you know, if we were all identical, it would be no purpose for any of us. Right. So it's right. just like finding the thing that you have and, you know, walking with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it so unique. And that's a good point because, you know, um, even growing up, I come from a long line of ministers and preachers and growing up, you know, in, in church. And there were certain pressures too with trying to fill a role mm -hmm. or not let others down because of the the bar that they set but when you have an open door where you're right you know just be who you are you right. know just just flow how you flow because there's a group that's drawn to you and i think part of that goes back to you know the people in in your your group 
knowing who they are so they don't lead you the wrong way or be dealing with the spirit of jealousy or envy and just saying things just because and now that pressure's on you or right. whoever vice versa to try to live up to a standard that's not even real yep and that's part of the challenge too you know just being confident in who you are your uniqueness and making sure those that's connected to you help you celebrate that's the key if you find out that you got people around you that never celebrate you yeah, or encourage nah. you on what you share with them then it's, not, it's time to stop sharing no yeah it's time to find some new friends yeah. that's what it's time that, to do. That, that season is done yeah you know and that's very important too as you move forward and go higher mm -hmm. you know um because every you know we go from faith to faith glory to glory but that means that every level there's going to be more expectation which means that there could be more pressure right and you as you grow and mature you have to know how to handle that pressure and then you have to know who's who you're going to lean on as you're going through that pressure right you know because um, you can't you can't depend on the same people all the time if they're not going up either right and i'm like even in the seasons that you are going through they might just be that for that season yeah and then when you go to your next there could be a whole nother group. You know, some people might stay with you on that season, but I agree. If they cannot celebrate with you and they envy and jealous and mad that you succeeded and you're doing these great things for the kingdom, and that's what bothers me the most. It's like, man, if we say we all love God, mm -hmm. right, and we doing this for the kingdom, right? Everybody want to throw that kingdom word around. Like, yeah. if we're doing this for the king, like, if we really doing this for the kingdom, then what is the problem if I'm doing this and I'm succeeding in doing this, like, why are you getting jealous or mad because you're not in this place that I'm in right now? This, this a whole nother yeah. topic for another podcast because in itself. People, people don't, people don't really understand the the true meaning of what Jesus said when he's talked about the kingdom. Right. But going back to that and you're right, that's the topic for another discussion. When you talk about pressure, I think part of it is we have to, as especially as believers change our mindset and our perspective on why we're dealing with the pressure because it goes back to Romans 8 and 28 everything works together all things work together for right. the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to purpose, purpose right so if we know it's according to purpose I think for us not to get upset and mad and angry at the people that come our way and apply pressure we have to change our mind according to Romans 12 and 2 to transform our way of thinking to say okay this pressure is coming to get me to my next level mm -hmm. as opposed to, Oh my God, this pressure is going to mess me up. This pressure I can't handle is too much because he says he's not going to put more on us than we can bear. Right. So if we change our perception and perspective on why we have this, why all this hell breaking loose, why we got this pressure on us, it goes back to, um, when you look at when they take a rocket and it goes out of space, mm -hmm. there's a, a certain amount of pressure that has to come from the, the rockets to propel it into outer space. So the more pressure, the more the explosion, which gives a great acceleration. So a lot of times, the more pressure we have, that means that we're on, a, on an accelerated course to go higher. Right. So at the end of the day, yeah, we have to be mindful of the peer pressure or pressure that we experience and sometimes that we put on ourselves, but we also have to change our mind as believers that, okay, he won't put me on me that I can bear, so let me see how I can rework this. That's what I love about mm -hmm. your mom. Your mom always has a pot. She always take a, a, pot, a negative to make it a positive. Right. And with the pressure, the pressure is, okay, it's coming. I thank God for it right. because I'm on my way somewhere. Mm -hmm. So when you're going through pressure, you know, especially as believers, you know that it's for your good mm -hmm. because God is getting you somewhere. Right. It's like that optimism, optimistic yeah. feeling that's like, you know, nothing is as truly bad as you might think it is. Like, there's always some good behind it. Yeah. Um, even going back to the space analogy, even when they get into space, there's things that fall off to keep mm -hmm. it going. Yeah. Right. So you got to even go oh, on profit. <laughs> <laughs> there's even things that have to, as you're going and you feel that pressure, there's certain things that can't go with you when yeah. you get into that certain, you, you know, dropping it. You dropping altitude. the nuggets, boy. You dropping that. You, you talk about me dropping. You dropping it today, boy. You drop, y'all hear that? He's dropping those nuggets. Come on, keep oh going. Oh my gosh! When you get to a certain altitude, there's yeah. when you <laughs> come on, boy. I wish I had a keyboard. I'll be playing. I'll be backing you up right now. <laughs> oh, <it's> funny. <laughs> there's just there's just people that can't, you know, be up there with you, That's right? It. Yeah. I was thinking about my time in Colorado, 
where in Colorado, that's just that's a different altitude in Colorado. Oh, yeah. You know, especially coming yeah. from Florida, you get loopy up there, right? The higher you go, people are not going to be able to breathe the oxygen that you up. No, that you, no. you know, where you are up there because it wasn't meant for them to be there with you. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, even that is just important to think about in its own. Just I'll just think about that for the space analogy. I right? just like, dang, people either going, you can either going to have to cut people off. Or people just gonna fall off, yeah, because it wasn't meant for them to go with you that far, yeah, yeah. And then you're going to a limit that others aren't even qualified to go, right? So, when you think about you know, when you're, when you're receiving that pressure, it's taking you into a whole nother level, mm-hmm. you know. So, that's 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 very that's on point, but boy, you was using that boy, <laughs> you, you, was, you, was, you, was, you heavy today, you heavy today. He said, what, what mom say, mom say, he walking heavy. <laughs> go ahead, mom, come on over here. <laughs> Go back to what you be saying. Uh, you ready for the word? What you say? Let's eat. Boy, I, I ate good right now. <laughs> I ate good right now, boy. <laughs> so listen, if this has been a blessing to you um, and it's given you something to reflect as far as the pressures in your life or things you've been dealing with, make sure you reach out to us, DM us. Yes. Connect with us on our Fill in the Gap podcast, uh, Instagram as well. Um, share it, like, subscribe. You can follow me, Clarence underscore Brookins. You can follow me at Malik underscore Brookins. And until next time, be blessed. See you.